In the Beatitudes, Jesus flips everything the world believes on its head. The world believes in wealth and material possessions, but Jesus blesses the poor in spirit. We see the prosperity of aggressive people, but Jesus blesses the meek. We love good food and drink, but Jesus blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. In this video, we will discuss the Beatitudes and find out what each one means for us personally. To the Batmobile. Let's go. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Greek word translated as poor is very difficult to pronounce, but it means abject poverty. True poverty is horrible. People faced with it suffer. Confronted daily with their own helplessness, they know the huge difference that even a small act of mercy can make. They eagerly watch for a gesture or a glance that might promise help. They long for kindness. They crave a bit of dignity. The poor in spirit are exactly like that before God. They know that they have nothing to offer them that he needs. There is no reason he has to accept them. They bring their brokenness, hoping for healing. They bring their sin, hoping for forgiveness. They do not come bargaining because they have nothing at all to offer. Their spirit, their poverty of spirit, has left them broken, making them fertile soil to receive God's blessing. In Matthew 19.23, Jesus tells us that a rich man will enter the kingdom of heaven with difficulty. God pulls us to himself, but wealth and power pull us inward. The greater our wealth, the more we love it and trust it, and the less we feel the need for God's help and the more prideful we become in His presence. As first world Christians, we must be sure not to let our material wealth make us become prideful in God's presence. We must become humble before God with poorness of spirit, realizing that we are sinful people in need of God's grace, and that we have nothing to offer Him that He needs. It is that person who will receive the blessings of the Kingdom of Heaven. suggests a timidity that Jesus did not intend to convey. To understand this beatitude, we must look at the original Greek word. The Greek word used in the beatitude is not easy to say, but it is used to describe Jesus when he's riding to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and when Jesus is being questioned before his death. Jesus is poised and in control in these situations, but he refuses to make claims for himself or defend himself. However, we can't really call Jesus weak or timid. Jesus flipped the money changers' tables in the temple and rebuked the religious leaders of the time on many occasions. Jesus taught with authority. This is not me as we usually think of me. So if Jesus was an example of biblical meekness, his behavior suggests the true meaning of the word. Jesus did not seek personal gain. But was forceful when upholding principle or protecting the weak. So, we can conclude that the word meek used in the Beatitude should really be translated as not self-seeking. Like Jesus, we should not be self-seeking. Jesus' strength came from God, and with God's help, we can do great things in the world. Not for ourselves, but for God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The words hunger and thirst mean less to us than they did to the people of Jesus' time. When we are hungry, we eat. When we are thirsty, we drink. We shop in supermarkets full of food. And we use clean water to wash excess food from our plates after dinner. It was different when Jesus was around. People were often hungry and sometimes starving. 
because they did not have food readily available. Hunger and thirst can be very compelling. A truly hungry person can hardly think of anything but food, and likewise a thirsty food person with water. To hunger and thirst is to be totally focused. So Jesus says, blessed are those who are totally focused on righteousness, for they will be filled. We should hunger and thirst for righteousness, and if we do, we can be sure that God will fill us with it. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. The merciful person Jesus is talking about is someone who sees someone else's pain and then acts to help them. God has shown us mercy by loving us when we are sinners and sending Jesus to die on the cross. Having shown us mercy, Jesus then sent us into the world to show mercy to others. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The pure in heart is completely devoted to God. The opposite of pure in heart is a divided heart, or one that tries to serve two masters. Matthew 6, verse 24, Jesus warns us that no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Jesus pronounced blessings not on those who avoid confrontation, but on those who make peace. Avoiding confrontation may be simple, but it may allow strife to persist. The peacemakers, however, intervene and stop it. We should not avoid confrontation, but when we see it, we should intervene and make peace. These are the people Jesus calls blessed. Jesus, you should rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. 